was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memories had been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never! Nick. Yo! How's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I am suing in the aisles, huh, Maya? Suing? Me? Oh, oh yes! I do remember feeling faint! Why on? Tell me the truth! It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Uh-huh? Me? I, uh, well... Uh, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two? I think you can do better than that. Come on! I saved Edgeworth in there, dude! Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me, yeah! Bow before your hero! Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Adjoff would have been found guilty! <laughs> but seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. Edgy ain't off the hook yet! Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Mood! I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really tell he... know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know, but what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right Nick? Yeah, you Larry. Not me? But, but why you Larry? Huh? Uh, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <laughs> Enough of the silent treatment! <laughs> Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes. In grade school. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What?! Hey, hey, Larry! What's he talking about? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it! I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final! Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring? End of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. 
Every month, kids would bring in an envelope of money for lunch from home. Ah, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared. With $38 still inside. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down for cold, so I'd skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we had a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I... I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty! It was you! Thief! Give the money back! It's such a meanie. No one play with him. It's me. You did it! You can't hide the truth! Tell us the truth! We're not gonna play with you anymore! Yeah, no ball in my west, you should be around in the <laughs> Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not white. In the end... Even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to the boy whose money had been stolen and was sitting. That's when it happened. Jackson! You shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. M Miles. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been saying you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent! But, but, Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. What are you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Let's think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone. Without a friend in the ward. You did a good thing, Larry. Uh, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells. It's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become an attorney just like my father. A defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death.
that's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Agile's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the energy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. That's what I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me and I believe in him. He's in pain and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Oh, Nick! So is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick! 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 We have to save Mr. Edzo, and it's the last thing we do, okay? What? It very well may be. First, there's that winter boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I settle for who? I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go! Hey, pal! Long time no see! Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Close one today, eh? Huh? I got so woke up, I snapped my tie in half! Uh, sorry about that? No problem, pal! Thanks to you, we now know who really did it! You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise! I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow! Come what may! It's my duty to you as a police officer! Now I'm off to catch me a criminal! Detective Gumshoe so is active today. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> no one can go into the woods today. The woods? The water was camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lot is in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Huh? This your eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edzo to show up for walk. But 
old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Uh, um. I know that claim of the throat anyway. Ah, uh -huh. hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, uh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon. You see? It's a gross book. There's no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Ed's of trial ends tomorrow. Uh, th that is true, yes. But from what I saw, today's trial, Edge of should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Nobody's home. Hello? Hello? Squawk! Hey! It's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! Squawk! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello! Hello! Squawk! That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly! What's number to the safe? One, two, two, eight, squawk! Let's open it, Nick. Come on! I'm sorry there isn't any money in there. Aww. But hey! Keeps it locked, right? There must be something of value in there. I'm not so sorry. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. Too. The only thing in here is a ladder. A ladder? Ah, boring! There's no name of signature on this thing. Ten women and very precise clear ladders. Get your event on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick? Why would Mr. Ezra's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your events on Miles Edgeworth. Miles says this is your last chance. Now is the time to get events on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the motor part in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and blame Edgeworth. Playing as a fat to lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. But it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and caught out Edge off, he was following instructions. Who could have ridden that ladder? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? What things for starting? This letter is an amazing clue.
You look as grim as always. <laughs> uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. The lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, all right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edsworth, didn't you know? That try was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That's sad. It does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? up the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at. Yet, he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert ha Hammond. I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's 
like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? All the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. Not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Kalman does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he'd do everything in his power to make it go away. Uh, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you've had it for a guilty sentence tomorrow. Uh, he's right! There is no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'd admit. No kidding! This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Events? Not me? Who is that old guy anyway? I I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant who got the crowd guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now it's time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men. Me, myself, and Robert Hammond? So says this is your last chance. Maybe. We're just talking about the statue of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yoni Yogi was a cop bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. Quick was incredibly strong. For I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, I felt like forever. We are thin, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Ah, help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. Let us use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yoni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary, temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? White. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I... 
didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. The last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Uh, help! I can't breathe! Quiet. I said quiet! You're not helping this any easy. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. We just used up more oxygen. I, I can't breathe! You're using up my air! What? Stop breathing my air! Ah, I'll stop you! Uh, what? What are you? Stop breathing my air! No! Father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence of that day in court or the bailiffs. In the days, I picked up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Ah! And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the last 15 years. But. It's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has been keep, kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that some people sun out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this that'll make sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean... It was me. I was a true criminal of the L6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the D06 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about D06. Mr. Grossbuck! Ah, uh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! I can't believe you're not! My, 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 my! Just calm down and tell me what's happening, hmm? Mr. Edgeworth, he... I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he saw his own father. Only a dream! Only a dream! I wonder... What? If there's a case that why do you two look so troubled? A 
also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he wants a friend him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired and the deed was done. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. about Edgeworth's father. He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he might have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very experienced with Mr. Van Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Van Karma is an extreme man. Words of testimony and evidence are nothing to him. The resort? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edge of tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And he died in despair as it was. Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I'm Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it... It seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Oh, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter. When he killed Hammond. I kill Robert Hammond. Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusts his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his clients found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially, he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? What would he have something to do with this? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Ah, von Karma, von Karma. Wait, 
You're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means... The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Monfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? I would Von Karma want to play Edgeworth. If he was Von Karma, who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had an accidental ex had accidentally killed his own father. He'd say it was a uh, quote, I should think. I press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth is guilty. But how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both a persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeing, seeking to satisfy goods against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court and Von Karma did win. He didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth, Stad, and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of the faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth accused accusation stood. Faulty evidence. There is no way to tell Von Karma has ever received this way as a prosecutor. Every Edgeworth dealt a blood to his perfect trial of my God. Wow. That has been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first time and the last vacation he never been taken in as many as a prosecutor. Really? He doesn't take vacations. Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? I tell you, he's never been to Europe. I have strange ideas about vacation, Maya. Mr. White. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police fires might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg. Thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. <laughs> One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going.
There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, uh, it's you. I don't think Gumsu will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumsu is planning the payment for real. Uh, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, no, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But, I guess Mr. Von Karma's in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes. He just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, a toy! I haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I'm just nursing you. Was it the here? Karma? Huh? One of the doors here was open. Someone must have been looking at it recently. The label says unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! The fire for DL6! It's completely empty! Wh what? What are you doing in here? Nick! V Von Karma! You. How did you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What, what, what are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team? Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon, you see, I really remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Need these things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Uh, so that's a piece of student, right? Well, Francis, you still can't say that being the um, amateurism. It's like his father. Always second wave. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind for Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? Against, against the mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. So you did. But what I don't get is. Why did you take a stand under your wing afterwards? Instead of your most bitter wife. That might be your turn. It's none of your business. That will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I had a defense attorney last this long. So you will lose in the end. My dad will forget his own guilt. It's the goal of 15 years ago. The researcher. If you've done your homework so well this summer, you must understand. You know what, Myers Edge will tell the court tomorrow. You're right. So, my company is going to bring up deal 6 tomorrow in court. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So, so you admit it? You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter? Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. But what? N Nick, what is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000! Oh, don't worry. 
People don't die from it. Usually. Now give me the letter. No. No. Oh, what are you? Maya! Out of my way! Ah! Uh, he got us. That was gone, of course. He took the Geo 6 infinite, all of it, back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya? Is she okay? Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! The letter! Did he take it? Huh? Oh. Yeah. Uh, are you okay? I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? Geo 6 um, incident evidence number 7 taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. 